I'm in the car. I gotta show you something. Can you see him? Watering his beautiful hostas. <sighs> Anyways, freaking 11.30. I had to vacuum the floors and clean the bathrooms because we no normally do that on Thursdays. And so I had to do all that this morning. Then we're going to pack our clothes into the suitcases and Ryan has her, one of our suitcases. So we had to modify that. It's just been one thing after another, but the house is in tip top shape for my mom and Jerry when they arrive. Yay. So yeah, we're not going to get there probably till midnight. Sorry. So sorry. Go to bed. Don't wait up for us. Leave the door unlocked. Love you. Bye. So I'm just about to go into the house to get ready for the wedding. I'm at my friend Kristen's house, her husband Ralph, this beautiful home. But uh, I've just had a lot of time to ponder my art. I'm all over the place with my art and I really want to do some large paintings and I want to develop a style. Like I have a style right now. But it's so tight and I really want to loosen up my painting. So that's my goal when I get home to at least paint one time a day. And I think I'm going to continue to do my art journal, but I'm not going to do it in such a small journal because I'm that makes me even more tight. I need to loosen up and I can only do that by painting larger with bigger brushes and more loose. So I think I'm going to do, like before I do some paintings, I'm going to actually develop the style that I want to paint in my sketchbook. Not sketchbook, art journal. <laughs> but I'm going to use a bigger art journal and I'm going to do some exercises that will help me to loosen up. Like I'm going to do one painting that is only done with a palette knife. Then I'm going to do another painting that is only done with like two large brushes and I'm just going to do some exercises that will hopefully get me to loosen up and find my groove and then transfer that style onto large cradle boards. That's the goal. I gotta loosen up y'all. I get so tight with my stuff. So we came back a day early from our vacation. I mean who really needs three days downtown Nashville? So anyways, I was anxious to get home. Mom and Jerry, you know, had come in, so um, they're staying with us. So I wanted to get home to them and just work. Work itself is insane. But anyway, I'm feeling completely overwhelmed right now <laughs> with everything that came in while we were gone. And I went to get something. It's at the house because it's normally in my bag, but I took my, my um, backpack. And I took that on vacation, so I took a bunch of stuff out, left it on my dresser, and the stuff I need is at the house, and I'm at the studio. Ah. Anyways, I'll get back in the swing of things probably next week. <laughs> because today is Wednesday, tomorrow we have the grandkids. Today is Friday. The... Oh, I don't even know. The 13th? No. I don't know. June 12th. Something like that. <laughs> I have no idea what day it is. I'm so confused because we're just, we got back from vacation on Tuesday night, late Tuesday. Anyways, we had the grandkids yesterday and um, Kevin's band. My husband's in two bands. He's in a Beatles tribute band called Shout. Shout. And then he's in a classic rock band called Green Bottle Fly. And because of the pandemic, they hadn't played since 2019. 
So they had a rehearsal in my studio yesterday. So I had the grandkids up at the house and Kevin was down here practicing with his bandmates. So my art studio turns into a music studio every so often so they can hold practice down here. Anyways, I would say TGIF, but I'm not one to say that because I love my job and I love my work. And I could seriously work 24 seven because I love it all so much because it's painting and it's cross stitching and it's punch needle, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's a good thing I have the grandkids and my family to keep me grounded and take some days off. So anyways, there you go. That's, that's my Friday. Happy Friday. It is, I got up at, well, I woke up at 4.30 and my alarm was going to go off at 5 and I'm like, there's no way that's happening. See, I've been so lucky and I have not gotten up to an alarm since my husband retired. It's been wonderful. Uh, but my mom and Jerry are here from Florida and I'm trying to get a jump on my day so that I can get done with work earlier and have time to spend with them. Because we normally eat dinner really late and, you know, I'm trying to move that up a little bit. And then my mom and I love playing cards together. So uh, I'm trying to get my work done, like try to get as much work done as I usually do, but just start earlier. So anyway, it's like quarter to six and I'm down at the studio already. That never happens. <laughs> I usually work up at the house for a while, but... So I have to be like laser focused. And I have a filter again today. Let me just explain why. Yesterday, I took the grandkids outside to play in the sprinkler. Well, Easton, he's the one that's turning two in July. He would not go in the sprinkler unless I went with him. And hold him also. <laughs> so I got just as soaked as they did. But when we came in, I got them... A sh you know, they played in the shower. They love the shower in the basement because it's like just this big, it's not a tub. It's like this big open shower. Anyways, they love it. And so I got them all cleaned up and everything. Well, I just threw my hair up in a clip and let it air dry because, you know, you got two little grandkids. You don't have time to do hair. I can totally relate to her mother. <laughs> um. Anyways, so thank God for filters or I wouldn't be recording myself at all. When I got back from vacation, I got an email from Legacy Publishing and they publish my teddy bear calendar. They've been publishing it now for, I don't know, maybe four years. I've, this is the third publisher I've had for that bear calendar. It started back in 1999 with Amcal and then it went from Amcal, I'm trying to think who published it next. Oh my Lord, I can't even remember. Anyways, now Legacy is doing it. So I have to get the cover image and at least two inside pages done by the end of this coming week. I've been painting this calendar since 1999 and I know the artwork is due in the summer. <laughs> oh, guess what? It's summer. <laughs> Jeez. It's just been crazy busy. You know, I'm... I'm a guest designer at two cross stitch retreats this year and that's thrown me for a loop a bit because of getting all the supplies in and making the kits and the one the one retreat there's 150 guests so anyways it's just kind of added more work to my schedule that I'm not used to and I don't know my head is full of of I don't even know what it's full of to be honest but and then the wedding, you know, I've got a couple of vacations in here that I don't normally have. So anyways, it's life is crazy. Let me just. One of the downfalls of getting down to the studio early in the morning is we get the sunrise coming in, which is actually a beautiful thing. Except when your windows are as filthy as mine. Look at that. Look at how horrible that is. Oh my goodness. You know. We basically, I feel like we have two houses. I mean, I have the house and the studio. And the house, we keep clean. Like, Thursday mornings, Kevin and I tag team cleaning because the grandkids are coming over. So we want the floors clean. Because, you know, 
little kids are on the floor a lot and they put stuff in their mouth a lot and they're potty training so you want the toilets clean so anyway that's our cleaning day is Thursday morning but when I get down to the studio I'm in complete work mode I don't think about oh I need to wash the windows I mean who does that when they get to work ah I'm considering hiring somebody to keep my studio clean I'll clean the house they can clean my studio <laughs> oh the struggle is real y'all so, Friday, I was really jonesing to paint something. I had been gone on vacation. Welcome to Teresa's Tidbits. This is a new segment that I want to do in my CreateTube videos. Just little things that I have learned along the way. I have been a full-time artist since 1992. 29 years and still going strong. So I've learned a few things along the way and I want to share them with you. So this segment's called Teresa's Tidbits. I was gonna call it Teresa's Tips but that sounds really too close to another word and no. So <laughs> we're going with tidbits. Teresa's tidbits. Anyways, my subject today is comparison. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare other artists' success to yours. Have you ever heard that phrase where they say it, it took her 25 years to become an overnight success? You don't know how long an artist has been working behind the scenes before they felt confident enough to show their work to the world. So you might see an artist come onto Instagram and they're only going to show their good stuff, right? And you might think that they're, you know, because they're new to Instagram, you might think they're a new artist and their page takes off or they're talking about, you know, being in galleries or doing, you know, shows and talk about all their success and you might think well you know I've been working on my art for 10 years now and I'm not having that kind of success yet but you don't know if they've been working 10 years behind the scenes before they came out to the public and showed their work so never compare yourself to other people's success my motto is this stay focused on you and your artwork don't compare yourself to others as far as technique, success, style, what have you. You are unique. Your art, therefore, is unique. So don't try to make your art look like someone else's. I mean, yes, we get inspired by other people's work. That's inevitable. Inevitable. I think I said it right. <laughs> Remember, words are hard. So, ooh, I got off track there. But find your own unique style. And how do you do that? Well, that's a whole different topic. We'll get into, that'll be a different Teresa's tidbits. But right now, just keep your nose to the grindstone and work on your art. Also, 
share the good and the bad share the good art share the bad art and when you share the art that you're not real like happy with you can post that w along with the photo because i think it's good for other artists to see other artists <laughs> struggle a bit not every painting is perfect not every painting is going to be what you want it to be so when you do share those ones that you're not happy with just say i'm not happy with this painting i could have done this or next time i'll do this and that helps other artists as well to share maybe they're not so good paintings oh god what else is there what else is there basically just don't compare yourself to others we are all made unique and we all have a purpose and your art has a voice and your art, like I said, is unique to you. Even if you tried to paint like someone else, it still would come out differently because you are unique. So embrace your uniqueness. If you're weird like me, embrace that too. I love weird people. <laughs> so just be you, focus on your art, be happy where you're at in your journey of art because maybe you've been doing art for only a few years but I'm sure after a few years of creating your art you have developed somewhat of a style and if you look back three years you can see improvement and even if it you know it might not necessarily be improvement it might just be more stylized you know what I'm saying does that make sense are you following me here can I get an amen <laughs> so Anyways, that's my tidbit this week, so I hope you enjoy this new segment. Okay, so I've been cross-stitching this morning and I've discovered that because I like to get stuff done quickly, punching is my jam. I'm so frustrated because I keep getting knots in my thread and I don't know, it's just <laughs> driving me crazy. So. I think it's just because I have a lot to do and I like to get stuff done fast. That's why I like watercolor. I like working with acrylics instead of oils because oils take too long to dry. I'm just always like on to the next thing. I want to keep going and going and going. So, I, so all that basically just to say that I will always love my punch needle because it's fast. You don't get knots in your thread. You see progress like mad mad progress with cross stitch i've been stitching for almost two hours and i don't feel like i got that much done i spent so much time getting knots out of my thread and re-threading my needle that i don't know i'm just frustrated but i'm going to persevere persevere pers yeah persevere i'm going to keep going and get better at cross stitch and i don't know i was watching a video of Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and she's stitching with with s silk threads and she said not a lot less so I might be switching over to stitching with silk is that right silk doesn't sound right like MPI yeah MPI silks today is today is Tuesday the 15th so yesterday during the day I finished the second coat on these doors and I finish the second coat on the trim oh, that's just not even showing up is it anyways it's kind of dark in here but the second coat on the trim around that door 
and drown that door doorway. So yay, we're gonna hang the doors back up and we will be done. Well, done for now. We're getting a floor put in down here in our basement. It's gonna look like gray wood. It's gonna be beautiful. And I'm getting rid of these all these rugs here. So once the floor is done, then we just have a little bit more on the ceiling to do and the basement will be done except for next year. See this closet here? We are taking the doors off, emptying the closet out. We're gonna get a new fridge and it's gonna be in there like flush with the wall. So it's recessed and a countertop. And then here will all be countertops. And then here will be countertop and see where those pipes come out. There's gonna be a sink there. And then from the corner of this wall to about here, will be a bar. So that back wall there, we want to do something really cool with it because when you're sitting at the bar, you, that's what you'll be looking at. So we're going to do something really cool on the back wall. And then the ceiling up here, all of these are coming down and we're going to put, it's going to be black up here. So little by little, all this trim here, well that won't show because we're going to have a bar and countertops there, but that trim all that kind of trim is going to be gone. Like it's it's here too, that's going to be gone. And it's going to be like this, it's going to be the dark trim. Yeah, I mean, this is, I haven't even decorated down here. So there's just random things. The only thing really that is decorated is this area right here. So once the floor is in, then I will feel good about buying cabinets and buying things to hang on the wall and putting some paintings on the wall and stuff like that. So yay going to have oh well when the bar's in it'll be completely done so that'll be nice but even just having the floor done and the ceilings done it will look way more livable if that makes any sense basically it will double our living space so which is amazing and this is where I sit to do my cross stitching and I'll, I watch floss too on the big screen <laughs> And then I do my stitching and my punching and my cross stitch designing on my laptop sitting here in this couch. So anyway, that's just a little tour of the basement and I will show you progress as we make progress. It got in the water and some frogs jumped and it jumped after the frogs. It was so cute. Oh, he's getting behind the weeds. Is it across the pond? Yeah, it just went up in the weeds. It needs to be with its mama. I'm surprised its mama's not around. I don't know. Oh, she's around or she's dead. Yeah, right? True. She's probably going to lay down in them. Oh, nope. There she is. She come out. Or he. Yep. See it? Oh, sweet baby. I know, it's too tiny to be without its mama. Maybe I should feed it. <laughs> Aww, there it goes. Today I'm covering this 24 inch diameter cradled board with scrapbook papers and I like to buy these scrapbook paper books. I don't know what you call them. What do you call these? 
I don't know. But what's nice about it is it's a collection, so that all the art uh, coordinates. It's got a certain theme, a certain color palette, so it makes it really easy when you are covering cradle board. Um, not that it really matters because, I mean, you can have any colors you want. They don't have to coordinate because you're pretty much covering when you paint, you're covering most of it. And then when you sand, after you're done painting and you sand it, all these little colors will just start peeking up uh, through the paint. So anyway, if you are going to have, like for instance, if you're going to paint an angel and you're going to have her dress, like you're not going to paint over her dress and you're just going to let the scrapbook paper show, then it's good to have something that coordinates. So other than that, it really doesn't matter. So, all right, let's get busy. Oh, I use either golden heavy gel matte medium. You can use that or less expensive that works just fine is Mod Podge, the matte ultra matte chalk it says mod podge just to uh get you know i usually just let me just show you what i do okay oh another thing to keep in mind is so I, we're actually going to be painting an angel so the face is going to be here in the center i just want to make sure i don't have any texture paper there like you can get um, paper that's like rigid rigid has has ridges on it like this one for instance oh that's going to show it very well but you wouldn't want something like that on her face okay for the background that's awesome so that's something to keep in mind uh, what i do basically is i just tear a piece off and what being that this is round normally i paint on square or rectangle but being that this is round, I'm just going to have it hang over the edge and then I'm going to go around and trim it and then sand it so it's nice and flush. Okay. So yeah, you just take your brush, stick it in the Mod Podge. I'll just do one real quick to show you and the rest of it I'll do as a time lapse video. Oh man, you got to be strong to open these dang things. Ugh, get all the ickies off. Ugh. All right. So I usually, like, I don't have to seal my wood or anything because the Mod Podge is going to do that for you. So I just put it on here, and then I also put it on the back of my paper. And I'm pretty sure I have a video on this YouTube channel showing how to do this. And then I put it on top as well. That way we're sealing it. And I use my finger to get out any air bubbles. You can use a tool rather than that, like a credit card or something maybe, but I don't know. I like to get my hands in the work. All right, and then I just do that till I cover the whole piece. I let that dry and cure for, you know, 12 hours at least, and then you're going to want to go over it again with a couple coats of Mod Podge or you can go over it with a couple coats of matte varnish. Something, you want it two or three coats at least over your paper to protect them during the sanding process which will be at the end of the painting. So yeah, you got to make sure you protect your papers otherwise when you sand, you're going to sand the paper, the pattern off the paper and it will just be white. So if you want to keep the colors in the pattern in the paper, you have to seal it really well. Uh, the best way to seal it, in all honesty, is to use, oh geez, I have a, okay, is this Country Living Caramel Color Chipping Cream. So this chipping cream is actually made for painting furniture where you would put your first coat of color on, you put on the chipping cream, you put your second coat on, and then when you sand, the chipping cream will protect the first coat of paint. Works the same with this. So if you don't want to put the two layers of Mod Podge over top or you don't, you know, you don't have that kind of time, you can always use this chipping cream. It's kind of expensive, but this huge thing will last you a long time. And you put that on, once that dries and cures, give it a good 24 hours, you can sand in sand and not worry about damaging your papers so this is my number one recommended product but if you don't have this 
on hand or you don't want to spend the money on it, just do Mod Podge or, uh, let's see, a matte varnish, Liquitec matte varnish. Two or three coats of that over top and it will protect your papers. All right, let's get busy. Hi guys, so I'm getting ready to sand this cradled board. Let me switch this around. Our next CW Live lesson, we are painting an angel over this round 24 inch diameter cradle board. And I have to trim the scrapbook papers off and then sand the edges so it's all smooth. Then I gotta put a couple layers of uh, varnish on to protect the papers. And uh, that way when we sand later, after the painting is done, we protect the papers. So I'll show the whole process. It's so gorgeous here today. It's like 70 degrees, a little bit breezy, sunny, gorgeous, not humid at all. Okay, so I'm going to trim off the papers around the edge so then I can sand it. Just, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to sand it. And hopefully I don't cut myself. I'd rather be in the studio doing this on a table, but I just wanted to share share this with you. So how I adhere my paper to the board is just using Mod Podge. I have pockets in my apron, so I'm putting all the papers in there. Um, I don't know. I might have shared it. I don't know if I videotaped myself doing that. I actually think I did. So I'll insert a little clip, or maybe I already have, in this video showing you how I adhere the papers. And then um, this is the next step in the process. Ah, some of these papers are going to end up on the deck. Yeah, just going around the edge. Not like I said, I don't have to do it exact because I am going to sand it as well. All right, so that is, I went around the whole thing. So now I'm just gonna sand it. Okay, so this is how I'm going to sand it.
some goodies in the mail today. This is from Fat Quarter Shop. This should be my linen gauge. Oh yeah, and crimson. I was out of crimson. I usually buy my stuff wholesale, but when I'm desperate, I know I can get it faster from one, two, three stitch or a fat quarter shop. Yeah, so here's that stitch gauge. And I want to see what stitch count the linen is from Blackberry Primitives. Hold on one second. from Blackberry Primitives sent me, I don't know, it looks like way bigger than a 13 by 17. She may have to give me a fat quarter shop maybe? A fat quarter shop. <laughs> a fat quarter. <laughs> Ooh, look at that brown color she gave me too. I'm so excited. Ooh, so this is biscotti. Hand dyed linen and this is earthy green, which is more of a brown. So let's use this stitch gauge and see what count linen it is. Oh, this is from Yarn Tree. Hmm, okay. So 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay. So, I think it's like a 30. Oh man, that's hard for me to see still. Oh my. I don't think my, I'm gonna have to have my magnifier to see that. Let's see the rip. I think it's a 30 count. Well, I'm gonna take it up to the house where I have a magnifier, a magnifier light that will help me see this better. Because I'm having a hard time seeing. Yep can't tell even with my nice glasses on so I'll have to get back with you on that I'm so bummed I thought I was gonna figure it out right now okay then I ordered from which else I needed to get I needed to get I needed to, my bad I needed to buy or I needed to be able to buy DMC wholesale I shouldn't have to go to Joanne and pay, you know, over a dollar for DMC floss when I can just set up a wholesale account. Well, I tried to set up a wholesale account with DMC, but they only go through distributors. So I signed up for an account, wholesale account with Wichelt. So I not only got some DMC floss. <sighs> okay, so this is the deal. I got DMC floss. This finishes out all the DMC floss that I needed for, oh my gosh, for the, oh, what do you call it? The Silver Needle Retreat. I designed a sampler and I'm kitting it up with all the linen and DMC. So look at, this is all DMC. Yeah, I have to get on that. I leave for the retreat. Kevin and I leave on the 13th or something like that of July. So it is, what is today, the 15th? So yeah, it's a month away that we leave. I gotta cut all the linen, which Kevin offered to do. So sweet. And then I ordered some linen from Wichelt. Because I love Picture This Plus Bramble. I absolutely love it. But it's very difficult to get a wholesale order from Picture This Plus because they're so popular that you know they they fall behind schedule and I think it takes like up to three months for, to get your order and I don't have, I just don't have time I'm always designing and I don't have time to wait so I really needed 
a replacement for Bramble. So I was looking on Witch House website and I picked out some light color fabrics that I think will work. Uh, this is lamb's wool. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'll show these. Now, I'll just show them now. This is French lace. Oh, that's really, really pretty. So let me get Bramble and let's see which one is closest. All right, so here's Bramble, and I have a fairly good size piece here, but it's 28 count, and all of my samplers, and I've been having everything stitch on 40 count, I just like the look of it better. So this is definitely not a match. As you can see, this, what is this again, antique lace? This is much more of a green tone. So I like it, but it definitely is not a replacement for Bramble. Well, I'll do that later. Then we have lamb's wool. I can tell that's already, I can tell that's too dark, but it's still a great color for samplers. So lamb's wool brings out the brown, the darker part of bramble. It's, it's very, it's a very pretty linen. I love it. So that's that. And then I got a big old piece of this. I don't even know what one this is. Let me look at the invoice. So let's see. Antique ivory. Huh, I don't have it all because unless let me see. Oh, my bad. There's more than one in here. Okay. Ooh, this one is platinum. That is beautiful. Still, it's still darker than bramble, but look at that beautiful, beautiful tan color. Oh, it's really, really pretty. That is beautiful for samplers. Then this one is sand. So if you hold sand up next to platinum, I don't know how well this is going to show. But they're both still darker than bramble, but oh man, they're beautiful for oh, anything. So the uh, sand, which is this one, is a little bit more brown, and the platinum is a little bit more gray, but perfect, perfect, perfect for sample colors. So I did not achieve my goal. <laughs> None of them are as light as the lightest color in Bramble. So I'm still on the hunt for that and I will just keep hunting. I mean in the meantime I'm going to place an order with Picture This Plus for the Bramble but I just don't know when I'll get it. So anyways that's my little unboxing for you today.
think it's that credit card file. This one didn't. That's it? I gotta get that credit card file. This one didn't work. Should I go ahead and send keepsakes? Yeah, I need to bill them for the other, but I don't know what you have to give me the. What it is that were? I. It's right. Oh. I gave it to you one time. I said it here. Is that oh, it? Oh, okay. I didn't know. Thank you. Yeah, just go ahead and send it. I mean, I trust them. I'll invoice them separately for the Trump show and then the yes. and the other two. Yes. Are you gonna send um like an a correct? You know how they had differences. I emailed that to her. Oh. She got it. Okay. So you're just gonna. But what I'm getting at is add oh. that to that one rather than making a new invoice. Because it's only one an item. 30 of one item, but uh, I couldn't do that. Just That's to keep it all in one. I think it should be, otherwise it could be confusing. Okay. And then, and then just redate it so that, you know what I mean? For, yeah, so she'll know that it's the most recent one. Hello, today is Wednesday the 16th of June. Yeah. Hard to believe we're halfway through June already. What the heck is going on with that? So again, I have my camera, my phone. I'm recording with my phone. And I have it laying on my magnifying light. It's a floor stand. So it pretty much covers most of the <sighs> magnifying apparatus. So I have just a little sliver to look through to stitch. So I'm stitching a little slower than normal, but I just wanted to <clears throat> come on here and say hi and show you my progress on this second piece of my stitching journey. This is a pattern that will be part of a book of patriotic charts that will be released Nashville Needlework Market, March 2022. I'm stitching one of the, oh, how many pieces are there? I think there's a total of nine pieces. All the other ones are out getting stitched by way better stitchers than I. This chart, or this pattern, my stitch piece, I should say, has a couple errors on it, but I'm leaving them because they're not like, it's not going to ruin the picture. Um, so, this, like I said, this is only the second piece I've ever stitched. So I'm still a beginner. I'm still learning. And... If you follow me at all, you know that I really didn't like stitching at all until I discovered, not discovered, I knew about the sewing method, I just couldn't grasp it. But I finally grasped the technique of the sewing method. So now I enjoy stitching because it's much faster and I don't have to reach under my fabric all the time, which when I did that, I was always unthreading my needle and it just made me crazy which is a short trip by the way <laughs> so I what was I gonna say oh there it went it's gone you know how that goes oh and last time I recorded this I didn't clean my glass like this like I said I have my phone sitting on my magnifying lamp so that you're seeing a close-up view. Basically, you're seeing what I see when I stitch. And last time I recorded that, I remember thinking, God, it looks really foggy. Well, it's because I didn't clean the, I hadn't cleaned the glass on the magnifying, the magnifying glass. I hadn't cleaned it, well, probably since I bought the thing. So anyway, it's a much clearer picker. picker. <laughs> My gosh, words. It's a much clearer picture now for you to see, actually see what I'm doing. 
also, since then, I've had a manicure and my nails are painted. So that's way more attractive than the last time I did it. There's still some black paint up under my nails because I had my painting class last night. Anyways, just wanted to show you my progress. It's coming along nice. Long may she wave. Um, the flag where it says 1776 and then all these areas I have to stitch white in there. But I'm going to do that last because I really want to move on with the design. I want to start seeing there's a, a man and a woman in a dog in this design and I really want to start working on those. So I will wait and do the white part of the flag later. It's just fill in. There's going to be no counting involved because it's basically just filling in. So stay tuned to see how it goes.
friends, I just wanted to go over. Okay, turn off your stinking phone. All right, let's start that over. Take two. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to go over a little bit of a recap from the past couple of weeks for my Create Tube and just show you some things that I didn't show in the video already does that make sense so you already see, saw you already seen God, words are hard you already saw what i worked on as far as painting but i did not show you what i worked on as far as my needle arts i showed you that i was working on cross stitch but i also did some punch needle too so i want to share that with you so for punch needle i worked on this and it's really close to being done but i ran out of the red and i ran out of you can see this is the back side so if you're not familiar with punch needle punch needle is it's a tool that you use to create this okay so the image you draw the image you trace the image on to your weaver's cloth and then i adhere it to an artist frame like a, that you'd put canvas on and then you use the tool and embroidery floss and you work from the back and you fill it in but this is your finished side so as you can see there's like little loops it creates loops and it reminds me of mini hooked rugs that's what drew me to it when i first saw it and decided i had to do it so all i need is a little bit of the red and then a little bit of this green color and it will be done so probably another five minutes of punching and it will be done this pattern is in my celebrate 15 years of needlework book the punch needle one i did one for punch needle and one for cross stitch so this is called this chick loves flowers okay then i showed you a little bit of myself doing some cross stitch and here's how far i got so at the beginning of this week I basically finished this one I put the rest of the rows in I put this in and now I'm working on this which is the bottom of her dress the bottom of her dress so I'm so excited to finish to get her stitched because on the flag all the white stripes in in the 1776 it's gonna have this white floss in it but I just wanted to move on I can always fill that in later i just really want to get this chickalita in there so yeah hopefully by next week i will have or the next create two i will have that stitched maybe i'll have the whole thing done no just kidding it's like there's no way <laughs> there's no way i will have all of it done but i would love it if i could at least get her done i guess that's it it was a fairly productive last couple of weeks i am really excited for cw live this coming tuesday because we're starting an angel painting which i guess i can show you that i did i showed you that i had it all sanded and everything well i have her drawn on there now so i use uh actually i think i show it in the this video but i use uh graphite paper and i trace it on and then i go over it with a sharpie paint marker black paint marker so that I can see the lines better when I start to paint it. So we're going to paint that in CW Live this week. Which you paint Wednesday, I'm going to continue painting my bear calendar because I'm really far behind on it. So the Mary and Jesus painting will have to wait. It's on the back burner for now and it's really close to being done so it's killing me that I'm not working on it. And what else? I also want to this coming week hopefully take an hour, give myself an hour only paint with bigger brushes and just go at it and have fun and try to loosen up in my painting because for cw live and for painting my bear calendar i can't necessarily loosen up because for one this in this class for cw live i'm instructing people on how to paint this angel so i need to be deliberate you know what i'm saying does that make sense and then for my bear calendar, I've painted it consistently a certain way for since 1999. So I need to continue 
with that style because I have people that collect it, so I wouldn't want to change that. And it's a little bit tighter style. So these exercises in between of just painting loose and giving myself a time frame forces me to paint quicker and therefore more loose. So I plan on doing that again next week and hopefully get back into my faith journaling. I miss doing that. But you know, my priority for the summer is to spend as much time with my mom and Jerry as possible. So uh, I just don't have as much time to work as I did before, which is perfectly fine. So whatever. Hey, I'm creating every single week. So I'm super excited about that. But all right, guys, we will see you next CreateTube in two weeks. Bye.